Well, hey, uh, welcome to Hey, It's the Luscos. Uh, today, it's just Hey, It's the Lusco. Uh, it's just me, Jenny. So I'm your host today. And I'm so excited for this conversation. I'm excited for you to hear this. Um, so David and Lisa Hughes are people who are so special to Levi and I. Um, they've been in our lives for, I think it's 11 years, maybe more. Um, we met them. We kind of, I, I talked with her today with um, Lisa Hughes um, about a few things about who she is, but also we just talk specifically about what it looks like and um, how it is walking with people who are going through hard things, who are going through um, traumatic things, grief, pain, heartache. Um, and it's really helpful. Honestly, I in our conversation, I was just so encouraged by some of her insight, what she was saying. It's, it's more simple than we make it to be. It's more simple than we think. And walking people through hard things is for everyone. We, we all can do it. And we're all in that place where God allows us to walk with people. And it's just, um, this is going to encourage you. I'm really excited about this. So um, listen in, lean in, and enjoy this message slash enjoy this conversation with Lisa Hughes. Well, Lisa Hughes, welcome to Hey, It's the Lescos. Jenny, thank you for having me. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. This is like I just this is one of the few podcasts I actually I actually watch this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I feel so special because you don't you don't normally listen to to podcasts or watch. I, I podcasts. don't many, but what I like is that yours is um, on video. Because I like to see people. Yeah. So I, like I've tried to listen to podcasts where it's just the voices, but I like to actually see. So yours, I get to see you and Levi and your guests. <laughs> and I like that. That is so, that's so awesome. I love it. I know. It's like we, um, we have the, the picture book of podcasts. If you need pictures. I love it. <laughs> I, well, I need pictures, so that helps me. Levi always makes fun of me. He's like, oh, Jenny, you probably wouldn't like this book because it doesn't have pictures. <laughs> <laughs> now, I do read books without pictures. Yes. But if I'm going to listen, I don't know, I have to, I try to do audio books and I get, can, I get, my mind runs off during an audio book. But yeah. if I can watch something, I love to watch. I like TV. It's interesting because our mutual friend, Holly Furtick, Shout out yes. Holly. Um, she, I feel like she has told us before that because she's an audiobook queen, big and, audiobook. Yeah, I feel like she has said like once you kind of get the story, like you kind of sit down and focus in and listen on it, then you can go and like do dishes and laundry and drive right. and stuff. But I've tried that and I feel like it still is hard for me. Do you find that too? I, I found the exact same thing. Yeah. And the first book that she recommended that I tried audio. She ended up telling me that was not a good book to try audio on mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Yeah. But then I read another book that was narrated by Meryl Streep. I didn't read it. I audio booked it. Yeah. And I loved it. And I keep saying to myself, I need to download another audio book. But when I read, it tends to be at night. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to fall asleep to it. But I'm, I think you and I should take on the challenge. We need to ask her for a book. Yeah. And we need to do it as an audio book. Because I have so it. much time in my car. An audiobook makes more sense. Yeah. But no, let's I know, do it. I, I read. I'm committed. I'm here for it. Let's give her the, we'll give her the challenge. Yes. She has okay. to find one for it. She, yeah, okay. we're going to put it all in her court and then we'll in, get to enjoy it. <laughs> That's awesome. Exactly. Um, so, okay. So you, we've never uh, interviewed you or your husband, David. So you as pastor at Church by the Glades, also you just recently has have started pastoring another church that is nearby. Yes. And what is the name of that yep. church? That is First Baptist Fort Lauderdale. Okay. First Baptist Fort Lauderdale. You guys are in beautiful, sunny Florida. And um, we are. whenever we get the chance to come visit you, we do. Um, but I, I, it's been too long. It we has, need to have you it, back. Honestly, I mean, it's right now, it's what, it's very cold in Montana. That's the key. We need to ask you in February. <laughs> 
Because we could get you in February. Yes, yes. <laughs> no, that is the key. Because we to go somewhere warm in in the winter is is wonderful. But um, I just wanted to kind of let our listeners, uh, our Lusketeers, um, kind of get an idea of who you are. And um, I will go into in a little bit, like kind of the theme of what what I wanted to really get to talk to you about today. Um, but to start off just to, um, and maybe even after that or before that, <laughs> I'm trying to like schedule it Whenever. out, but my scheduling it skills out. are horrible. We'll figure but, it out. Um, but even talk about like how we met. But first of all, who are you? Um, wh- how you and David have been, your husband, David, ha- have been married 25 years. Mm-hmm. And I was a child bride. <laughs> You were a child. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Um I guess here, let me just go ahead and say, like, I love okay. you. And you have been a uh, a friend to me for gosh, I was trying to think when it was that we met. Was it twenty um I'm trying to remember as well. Um, I clearly remember when I met you. You and your kids, you were, we met in an elevator originally. Oh. I think in Charlotte. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that. We were in Charlotte and you were in an elevator and you guys all walked. We were in like typical travel clothes and looked like moms and dads. And you and Levi walked in with all your cute little kids and you look so cool. And we're like, oh man, we had to meet them right now. <laughs> we look terrible and they look so cool. But we loved you, right? First of all, I want to stop. I want to thank you. Thank Aww. you for having me for this conversation. And Jenny, I love you too. Mm. I've loved you from the moment I met you. I I do think there are some relationships where you just, not in a weird way, but your heart's kind of knit together right away. And you don't even know what that means, yeah. like what it will look like. And it's not like we talk every day or every week or every month, but whenever we see you guys. It's just a breath of fresh air. Mm. You and Levi are always a breath of fresh air. And we love your kids too. So thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. I feel the same. But I think we were, yeah, we were in Charlotte. And um, we, I mean, this is a glimpse of of who you are in your family too. Of like, I think we met literally serving at uh, past, yes. Pastor Stephen and Holly is love, love week. It was love week. That's okay, yeah, what yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah. That's, right, that's, that's why right. we were there. Okay. And so we met that way, literally getting to serve God together at someone else's church. <laughs> yes. And I think yes. that's just so cool. Like um, to be able to kind of uh, rally around our friends, Pastor Stephen and Holly um, and be there like for them, for the, the filming recording of uh, one of their live albums, yep. but then to serve um, during love week with them, like, and it was, it was amazing. It was amazing. It was amazing. And our kids were little, like, cause I think Charlie uh-huh. was like, I don't know, super s- young, 16 or maybe younger than that. He, he, he may have been younger than yeah. that. And, you know, we actually met, I don't even know if you know this, we met Levi briefly years before that. Also, I feel like I feel like Kali should be on this broadcast because now we've mentioned her three times. <laughs> but it was actually it was actually at a Code Orange revival afterwards. Mm-hmm. And you were not there. Levi was there and we met him super briefly, but he made it of course, he made an impression on us even then. But I mean it was really brief then. Yeah. And then we met you again for Love Week. Yeah. Cause you guys have been friends with the Furtix for a long time. Quite and a while. Um, yeah. anyways, we I I just I I agree with what you said about, I think there are some of those friendships where it's just, oh, we're friends. Right. For life. And it doesn't matter. For life. Like we just love, we, we love each other. So, um, okay. So you have Charlie and he's 24, 25, three, 23. Okay. He's 23. Um, and you have Victoria who's 21. 22. 22. They're 15 (laughs) months apart. Maybe I should just let you tell me about your family. I mean, they're, they're, you're pretty much right on it. Charlie's 23, but he'll actually be 24 in March. So you're not okay. far off. Okay. He'll be 24 in March. Victoria's 22. And then we have Zane, who's 14. Okay. And they're all taller than you, right? Oh, no, no, no. Zane's nope. taller than you. Zane's taller than me. Victoria, 
is going to be the shortest in the family. So we love you, she's Victoria. not growing. She's not growing anymore, but we do love her. Yes, yes. Wow. Okay. So 25 years. Um, how did you and David meet? That is a long story, but we did meet. <laughs> we did meet in church. I'll very briefly. Um, I had just come, come home from college and my family had started going to a new church while I was away. And I think it was my sister that said, Hey, there's this cute pastor. There's a new pastor at this church. He's kind of cute. And I was like, yeah, okay. And I was sitting there and announcements came and David, who's now my husband walked across the stage to do announcements. And I looked at my mom and I said, I'm going to marry that guy. Oh my gosh. And she said, no, you're not. And she gave me like three or four reasons why I would not marry him. And I said, okay, well, maybe not him, but someone like him. (laughs) And I don't know what it was about him. And then about two years later, I met. So it was a little bit of time between seeing him and actually meeting him. Wow. Okay. So what month did you guys get married? April. April. Okay. That's April of 1998. Okay. And 25 years. Okay, so just kind of to give a little, like, um, I don't know, like a little synopsis or a little, like, overview of what marriage has meant to you and, like, um, getting to grow old with with your husband. Like, what? just kind of explain that a little bit and what maybe, I don't know, just kind of dive into that a little bit. Well, I mean, you said grow old. We're definitely getting older. That's for (laughs) sure. (laughs) I'll tell you, it has been, obviously, no marriage is perfect. No marriage is perfect. But we've had, I can honestly say we've had 25 years of a really great marriage. Mm. Again, not a perfect marriage, but a great marriage. Um, I'm married to probably the kindest person that I know. Mm. And so that's, that's probably good for me. I'm nice, but he's, he's really nice. Um, (laughs) He's a great leader, a great leader. Yes, for our church, but he's a great leader in our home. I mean, I, it's kind of like when you marry somebody, I thought David would be a great husband. I had no idea what a great dad he would be. Yeah. He's a phenomenal, phenomenal dad. So it's been fun. I mean, we, so we got married in April of 1998 and he was called to be the pastor of the church that we came to. It's now called Church by the Glades. But when he took it, it was called Coral Baptist Church. And I was working outside the home. Um, I was a talent agent. So I kept working. And he took this church. And it was just, it's been a pretty wild ride. I look back and when when we keep saying 25 years, I'm like, wow, that's so long. And at the same time, it doesn't feel very long at all. Like it feels like, I don't know five years ago, 10 years ago. And then when you really look back, you're like, no, it's 25 years. That's a long time. That's a long time. But it has been, it has been a lot of fun. Mm. We've had a lot of fun. So good. I don't have a huge story. I just, it's just been, it's just been a nice journey and it keeps getting better. I mean, I truly do believe it seems like every season is better. Mm. Every year is better. You know, it's, we we have a great we have a great marriage again not perfect but it's it's great yeah well i think that's what um we we want to know that that's possible cuz we know i think we all know that there's no perfect person obviously there's no perfect Absolutely. marriage i love that that's one of your guys's um churches kind of slogans a little bit no perfect people allowed like it's just true it's like we we don't have perfect relationships but it's possible to have a great relationship in the midst of the mess and imperfection and growing and being, and you guys really do um, respect each other and you guys honor each other and love each other. And it's really beautiful to see that um, as friends looking on, but then also, like you said, getting to see that um, respect, that, that love flowing through your kids and they, Mm. your kids, all three of them, um, Charlie, Victoria, and Zane are, um, are like gems. They love the Lord and they love each other. And I, and again, like, I know that that it's not like, it's not perfect, but it's so genuine and it's so, um, it's so beautiful to see. And anytime that our family gets time with your family, we're always encouraged like, okay, it is possible to have adult kids who are 
who love Jesus and who are awesome and who want to hang out with with us. Like it is possible. So Lord, please let that be in our family too, you know. Well, listen, I watch I watch you and Levi. I mean, I watch you guys when we're up close and then I watch you guys from afar and I feel like you all do such a great I mean, the amount of travel that you do and how you make it a family thing. I mean, like the family's never in competition with the ministry. I feel like you bring your kids along and everything and you all And again, I know social media isn't always the exact depiction, Mm -hmm. but you all have fun together. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have fun. And I I just think to even have friends that you can look at, because again, no marriage is perfect. So sometimes it's nice to look and be like, you know what? I need to have more fun. I Lately, I just been haven't been fun for my kids. And I know you can't always be fun, but I watch watch you all. And I feel like you, I think you do the best of anyone of incorporating your kids into ministry. And you can tell your kids, and especially, obviously, Olivia is the oldest, so I know her the best. And she and Victoria have a really sweet relationship. They I mean, really they, text, they text quite a bit. Yeah. And, I mean, you're on the exact same path. So, and we adore your kids. Oh, oh my god, I love your kids. Oh, thank you. It's um, I have not been around Linux enough, though. I need to be around <laughs> Linux more. You do. You really do. You really do. He <laughs> is just the things that he says, and I don't even like. I can't even write them all down because they're just always something like genuinely funny or and connects right. like connects in the moment. Like it's just like how do you, what. I mean, obviously, your your father is uh, Levi Lesko, so that makes sense. But um, <laughs> but it's just funny. He's so funny, and he's a boy. I like you. Just post on Instagram him wearing glasses because he wanted to wear glasses like you. I know. It's like, go Linux. I, I know. It. I love it. But specifically because my eyes have gotten worse recently, and I and wearing readers, and he he said that specifically. He's like, "Mom, I I'm gonna wear my readers too." But he he took his sunglasses and popped out the lenses and then put them on, and, <laughs> and he's literally been wearing them around all the time. Um, I love it. Which is funny because all, Levi and I both have really bad vision, um, and our kids all wear glasses. Lenya was yeah, the only one so. that. I mean, she didn't wear glasses when she when she went to heaven, but like I, they all wear glasses. So I'm like, buddy, you're you might you might right. be wearing glasses soon. So just enjoy the no, the no glasses phase. It's so cute, though. It's so, so cute. sweet, it's so sweet. But um, so I guess um, maybe one thing that I that I'm thinking of. I mean, I guess in my season of life that I'm in right now, like with the kids. Um, and intentionality. And um, I I guess my struggle right now is is the bickering. <laughs> and yeah. I'm, I'm going to be like, I'm just going to be honest because like we do, we are very intentional with our kids and we do include them in everything. And for better or for worse, like we, we homeschool, we do all the things so that they can travel with us. But um Did you ever find, or maybe you could even just give a little bit of like um, perspective in um, dealing with fighting with kids. And I I feel like your kids get along well, but is there anything like any little tidbit of anything that you could just say, hey, this is helpful or it's just, or it's normal, or it's just kind of the constant like back and forth between the kids. Um, I don't know if there's anything that you have to speak I know, into that. I'm, but... I'm sitting here, Mike, anyone that's looking at me right now, I'm putting my eyes back and forth. I'm trying to think. Don't get me wrong. I have, I have very, I do have good kids, yes. just like you do. But we had a lot of that too. Mm. A lot of that. Um, we tried, as, I'm, I'm trying to think of even something recently. <laughs> I mean, we tried as... I, my kids love each other, yes. but they're siblings, yes. you know, they're siblings. And I'm, I'm just like, sometimes I don't understand why they do. I don't have great insight on this one, Jenny. I really don't. I wish Julie Richard was on here because she would have something <laughs> great to say. She has know, a whole right? ministry called Fearless Mom. She'd have a great <laughs> thing to say. We're really big on kindness, though. I mean, my husband, one of his main, it, with our church, with our home, is kindness. Yeah. I mean, so when he hears our kids being unkind, he has, he has very little tolerance for that. Yeah. I mean, so we do try to, we do try to nip it in the bud pretty quick. I mean, we don't let them speak certain ways to each other when we can get involved. I mean, but 
I mean, Charlie and Victoria are a little bit older now, but when they were in high school, I mean, it, there are times it can be embarrassing. You know, you're at a dinner and you're getting phone calls or texts from your kids because they can't get along while you're at a dinner, yeah. you know, and these aren't, they're like your kids. These are not bad kids. Yeah. But it's like, I don't understand because I look at some siblings and it seems like they never argue at all. That wasn't the case with that wasn't the case. Okay. With that so case. it is, it is normal. There is like a, there is a sibling like situation. I, I think it's normal. I mean, it was normal. You have a lot of siblings. Yes. It was normal with my siblings and I growing up. I mean, I, I think it's normal. I, I think it's keeping it. Keeping it where it doesn't get ugly. Yeah. And when it gets ugly, it gets shut down. Yeah. And that's when and that's when there's consequences. When if words are said that shouldn't be said, that are biting, that are personal, the other stuff we would just kind of step in and try to squash it. Yeah, I'm not great on this question, yeah. Jenny. I'm, no, that, my kids definitely my kids definitely <laughs> argue. No, that is that's helpful though. Cause I think sometimes it's um like you're with your kids or you like you you just see them all the time and you wonder like is this actually like is this normal is this good is this bad right. is this healthy is this you know well, but and I, think about it as much as your kids are together too yeah like homeschooling traveling together mm-hmm. it's truly that they're going to either be seasons of the best of friends or not really but almost like enemies like yeah. are they even going to like each other yeah <laughs> and and they do they do i think that that just comes with getting a little bit older, you know, because totally. Charlie and Victoria were very close together. Um, they were 15 months apart. Oh, so they gosh, had a yeah. lot of interactions of the same friends and that didn't always fly, you know, one of them not really wanting to include the other one. Cause it, and I, I do get that. Yeah. I do, but your kids are together a lot, yeah. you know? So I, I think the more they're together, the more that that happens. Yes. So. No, I, and I think that's helpful even, um, of what like is tolerated and what's not. I think that's that's right. such a helpful insight because it's like, okay, that's normal for you guys to be on each other's nerves, to struggle through this, to be like mocking and all that stuff. But right. there's a there's a line that you there's a don't line. cross. And if you and I do feel like you know that line yeah. with your kids. Like yeah. you know that line. Yeah. I guess like I just I feel like line. I'm always saying like let let's be kind practice patience. This is this <laughs> this issue that you have right now with this sibling is going to help you in your future with a, a a difficult person that you work with or a difficult person that you like go to school with or whatever. Like it's just I feel like I'm constantly saying that, but maybe maybe it'll it'll hit them. I have to be honest, this <laughs> helps me because I just assumed your kids, especially your girls, I just assume they wake up wanting to be around each other oh and do each other's hair and <laughs> play tennis together or ski. So it actually helps me to hear that our kids do this a little bit too. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, we're we're not alone. We're not alone. <laughs> this is our support. God will lead system. us. God will help us. <laughs> <laughs> um okay, so Lisa, one of um one of the things about you and your husband, um one of the things that characterizes you um is how you're you do life with people, but you also walk with people through what they're going through. And um mm. and I've seen this over the past years that we've known each other. And I just kind of wanted to like pull on this thread a little bit with um today and kind of dig into this a little bit of what um what this looks like for you. And I guess specifically you guys where you guys live, um you've had traumatic things happen around you in your community. Um, and I mean, we, we all do, I feel like we all are surrounded by this kind of thing, but you guys have specifically, I feel like God's called you guys to walk with people in their pain and in their grief. Mm. And I kind of wanted to talk about this because I feel like one of the questions that we get often is how do I, grieve with those who grieve? How do I mourn mm. with those who mourn? How do I say the th- the right things? How do I walk with people when they are dealing with traumatic things or, or dealing with grief or dealing with pain or fill in the blank? And I just kind of wanted to talk about this and not that you necessarily 
um, can say like, oh, well, A, B, C, one, two, three, right. but kind of just to give us insight as to maybe what this has looked like for you guys. And maybe you can kind of bring to light some things that would be helpful for those who are walking um, with people through heartache, but also um, who will, because I think we all are in that place, whether right. we are struggling through grief or pain, or we are walking with someone. And I think that um, what you guys, um, what characterizes you guys is just your your willingness to be available to what God's called you to. But maybe we could talk a little bit about that, like what that, may, whether specifically or generic or generally, what that has looked like for you guys and maybe how you've learned through that. Well, it's, it's one of, I would say walking through people, especially during the season of loss and loss can look like so many different things. It's probably one of the greatest honors that I've had in ministry. And I know that word is thrown around kind of loosely, but um, I, one of the specific things you're talking about is we had a massive shooting in our area several years ago. And even though we live in greater Fort Lauderdale, the little area we live in is actually like it's a weird little pocket of community. Mm. And we, you know, I had a couple of friends that personally lost their kids in that shooting. Mm. I, and I, I think that's one of the things that you're talking about yeah. when you walk with people through things. and. It was, it was probably the most difficult thing that we've dealt with in our ministry. And it was probably one of the greatest honors wow. is to be with these families where you, you understand the pain of what that is to lose a child. I've, I've never, I've never lost a child. So mm-hmm. I, I don't understand. And I think that's one of the things that when you're given the opportunity to, and it is an opportunity when you're given the opportunity to love someone during that season, you, you need to be very quick to recognize, I don't understand that pain. Wow. And what I have found with my friends is they actually don't want me to understand that pain. Mm. They don't want me to. But there's something about just being there for them and being t- willing to walk and, and sometimes really just not saying anything. I remember a couple of times walking into those homes and David and I would pray together, you know, God, go before us with our mouths, you know, go, go before us with our words. And sometimes what God would say is just don't say anything, you know, just, just be there, you know, just be there in any way that you can. I've, I have right now um, a couple of friends walking through very, very painful divorces. Mm-hmm. Again, I've never been through a divorce. Yeah. So I don't fully understand what that pain is, but what they're going through is pain. I mean, you can see it on their faces. And I I think sometimes they just need, they just need someone there that's just there that will just listen. I mean, Jenny, it's not because I'm doing this with you. I've learned a lot from you and Levi. Mm. Um, You guys on your book tour through the eyes of a lion, you came here on the tour, which was a one night deal, but then you came back and did a weekend. And that's back when we were doing, it was either six or seven services, yeah. which is a lot. Yeah. And and you were dealing with a very heavy subject. And after every service, you all met with people in our office. And I know how draining it is to speak six times, five times, six times. And the fact that you guys came, and I feel like one of the things you do so well, you're doing it right now, you, you look at people in the eyes. I mean, you just look at people in the eyes. And I think there's just so such comfort. My friend Gina, just probably about two or three weeks ago, she talked about the time that she met you in the office and she had lost her son. Mm. And she said there was something about Jenny just looking at me and me knowing that she understood what I was going through. And I don't even know that you talked to her wow. that much. I mean, you probably did, but you were just there. I mean, you're willing, you're willing to leverage your pain to maybe ease hers a little bit. Mm. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. Well, that's and that's then beautiful. you all and then also you all flew in when we were going through our tragedy. You and Levi came in. He wasn't preaching, and you guys were like, "We're just here for any of the families that need to." So I I think it's one of the most beautiful things. And you guys have done incredible things in your ministry. I mean, we we 
cheer you on on the sidelines like you would never believe. Mm. But I, one of the most beautiful, probably the most beautiful thing is you've taken this pain and God doesn't cause the pain, but he can use the pain. Yeah. And I feel like you guys have used your pain better than anybody I've ever, I've ever seen anybody I've ever seen. And I, I offer those resources. I've given out books. I've given out Levi's book, your book. Your book was huge mm. for the women that I know. Like wow. they needed to hear from a female voice. They just need to hear from another mom. You know, so the fact that you were willing, and I know that just that writing process had to be, I mean, it had to be a thing. You know, it had to be a real journey for you. Yeah. But the fact that you've been able to leverage that to help bring healing to other people. So I, I've used... I don't know if I'm answering your question correctly, but I've used things like that. What has helped you like to reverse it as someone that's gone through it? What are the things that people have done or said that have brought you comfort? Like, I'd like to learn from that. Well, thank you. And um, I love that we can learn from each other. And I, I guess um, what you're saying is just so huge and i think the the po- there's power in it even though it s- sounds so simple i think it's that just being there and just showing up and for you to be in a place where you haven't experienced the loss of a child you haven't experienced the um heartache and pain of divorce yet what you said is so key you see it as an opportunity and i think that that is just that's a simple thing that maybe um, for some of us, it's, oh yeah, it's an opportunity, but that's actually a big deal because you look at it as, um, or I guess what it really is, is you're asking God to change how you're viewing something like that and how you're viewing the people who are in your life and the, the things that God brings your way as an opportunity. And I think that's such a huge word because it's like, this isn't just um, a like something that I do for my job of being a, a pastor or pastor's wife right. or in ministry. Like this is actually something that God's that God is ordaining, that God is using, and that God's opening up the door for me. Like for you to say that it's it's one of the greatest honors to get to walk with people through their pain. I think that's. I think that's a gift. I think that's a gift to be able to to see that and say, hey, that's mine. Like, I, I don't know exactly what this is going to look like. I don't know exactly what I'm going to say or what I'm going to do, but but this this I can do this, like, because God's mm. leading me into this. And I think that that's something that's really powerful. And is that something that you, um, you've kind of just learned along the way or just maybe something that God's just kind of naturally gifted you in it with eyes to see of just seeing that as an opportunity? That's a great question. Because as you were talking, you know, you mentioned being a pastor's wife. And I think one of the things about walking people with people through pain is everyone has that opportunity. You Mm -hmm. don't have to sit. We may have more exposure to it because it's a natural, it's kind of a natural flow to people to go to their spiritual leaders. Yeah if they're going through something, but I think everyone has the opportunity. Everyone has someone in their life that's hurting from something, from something. Right. So is it something you're uniquely gifted at? I, I don't, I don't sit here and say I'm gifted at a lot of things. I don't write books. I don't speak very often. I do think I, the the people that I, that are my friends, I do think I'm a very good friend. Yeah. And so I well, thank you. I, I, I try to be. I, I try to be. You know, if, if if I have the privilege of getting to be your friend, I want to be a good friend. Mm. I want you to know that if you come to me, whether it's because you're going through a divorce or whether it's something painful, I want you to know that you can trust me. Yeah. Like that whatever you say to me, whether it's in a moment of pain or just when you have someone to talk to you, that you don't worry that you're going to be judged by what you have to say to me or that I will break your confidence. Even if we have a mutual friend that I can share it as a prayer request, I, you know, I, that, that you've got my confidence. Yeah. And so I, like a couple of friends that are going through things, I mean, they say some pretty raw things to me, which I actually, I actually like that they do, even knowing I'm a pastor's wife. They say some things to me that people typically wouldn't say they're pastor's wife. <laughs> and again, I, I feel, I feel very honored by that. Like I think, okay, they feel safe. They feel safe right here 
that they can say these things and they're not going to walk away and worry about how did that sound? You know, what is she thinking of me now? They're, they're in pain. Yeah, They're in pain. You say a lot of things when you're going through pain. So it is, it is a privilege. And I think, I think that no matter what seat you sit in, whether you're a neighbor or whether you're a teacher or whether it's a stay at home mom friend, I feel like everyone is going to be given an opportunity at some point. And it's whether or not they view it as an opportunity that they get to walk. And it's great because when you get to walk with someone through it, it's not just being there in the moment. It's also being there as you start to see some healing. Mm. I mean, my one friend that lost her son, that we were there the morning after his loss. And now we've been there because those shootings happened in 24. So I'm thinking this one girl, you know, specifically, and now we're going on a six year anniversary, February 14th. And the she's still in pain. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I don't know that the pain, I mean, you would, I don't know that it ever goes away, yeah. but the healing that I've seen take place from then until now. And again, the pain is not gone it is by no things. Things were forever changed from that day, but I've seen the, the, the beauty has been in walking through the whole journey Gosh. and getting to see, okay, God, I mean, Romans eight twenty eight. you know, God causes all things to work together for good. It doesn't say that God causes all things. It doesn't say all things are good, but it does say you'll work it all together for your good. Yeah. And her son hasn't been brought back, but I have seen where there has been some growth and some good. I mean, they've, she, she's made laws change. She's, she's, again, she has not brought her child back. But the things that she's done with her pain has been really beautiful. And you only get to experience that whole thing if you're willing to walk through it with them. Wow. Wow, Lisa. That's, that's huge. So what I hear you saying is that it's not even just about like the honor of, of getting to be there for someone in their darkest days, but also getting to see the work that God's doing um, yeah. in them, the healing that he's doing and the, and I, that's huge. Cause that's such a perspective shift. Cause that's more, that's like, that's not just, um, Hey, I'm here for a second. Although I think sometimes, um, we all are called to maybe different parts of someone's Abs- healing. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Absolutely. Yeah. But to be able to say, Hey God, I'm willing, um, for however long you want me to to be in this, I'm willing. And I think that that's a really big, um, a big thing to not only see the opportunity, but to be willing to like go for the ride for however long God allows that because, right. Because we don't, we don't even have any idea what God's doing through us and in us when we just say, here I am, God send me like to be able to say like, God, I want to just, I want to show up and I want to be here for this person um, is one thing. But then on the other side of it, like for you to get to even just partake in the fruit of that healing for your friend, like Mm -hmm. I can just imagine um, what that's doing deep in you. And I think that that's something that is so beautiful about how you're willing to just be available is that you're also reaping benefits that you probably we we won't even know until heaven but like you're right. the deepening and the the sweetness and the depth of who you are is also part of the fruit and the healing that you're getting to experience through these relationships with people that you've just said yeah. here I am and i think that that is that is so profound to just say god i see this opportunity and here I am, and and I love getting to like be a part of the the whole process, which is messy and hard and horrible and awkward, and you don't necessarily know what to say sometimes or won't know what to do, but you're just there. And I think that that's huge. Yeah. What What would you say? I mean, I'm sorry to turn this around on you, but you've obviously <laughs> for those for those of us that are trying to learn, you know. You, I mean, the tragedy of losing Linya, I love how you say, you know, when she went to heaven, and I've used that so much with people, like, that it's not how many days she's been gone, it's how many days closer you are yeah. 
to getting to see her again, which is when you talk about a perspective shift, Mm -hmm. so much of life is shifting our perspective, you know, and I, I love that. What were, what were some things as I moved forward in this that were helpful to you all that people did that they said, or that they didn't say, or, I mean, what were some of those nuggets that you walked away from that, that you've possibly used now because it was such a comfort to you? Yeah, gosh. Um, the beautiful thing is that God has used, I mean, countless people over over these last 11 years. Like, I mean, even before that, like our obviously our greatest grief has been um, saying goodbye to Lenya and her not being with us anymore. But um, I just love how the body of Christ works in that everyone kind of has a different like role and perspective and gifting. And, um, and I think when we kind of operate in what God's given us, there's such a strength in that. So like, Mm. um, I think I just, I look, I remember like how there were friends who were so close to us who were there that night. Like they came over to our house and I think they prayed for us. But the biggest thing that I remember is that they were there and that they just, Mm. they showed up. And I think Olivia was seven at the time. And I think she wanted donut holes and like Dr. Pepper and they brought that. (laughs) And, um, but just those, those little things where they just showed up. And I think that that's something that you have been gifted in because I feel like whether we go to Holly's, um, uh, ladies, event or we're at um, Shelly's thing or we're at this thing or this thing. Like, I feel like you just, you show, you show up. Did I just saw you show up? (laughs) (laughs) Like, what's she doing here again? She's here again? (laughs) Lisa Hughes, she's just here. No, but like you show up and I think that you, you see an invitation to something. Obviously you, your priority is your husband and your kids and your family and your church. But like, as you, as, as you prayerfully or just are like, Hey, I want to, I want to go to this. I think I should go to this or whatever. Like you just are there. And I think that there's Mm. power in, in your presence. And so, um, to be able to just show up and, um, and kind of risk that awkwardness. Cause I think sometimes we feel, and I know from, from me, like on the side of like, wanting to bring comfort, there is an awkwardness to that. There's like a, yeah. um, I'm here, but am I wanted? But it, should I stay here? But I can't tell you how good it makes me <laughs> to hear you say that because there have been, there have been things I've shown up at that the whole time I'm like, oh my gosh, am I acting so weird? Am I acting so awkward? Am I even supposed to be here right now? I think there's a room was I supposed to go in that room was I supposed to stand outside <laughs> um showing showing up though too I I do think some of that is seasons of life yeah like I'm in a season now where my two older kids are older yeah you know Zane's 14 and so I am in a season where if I hear you're having a women's thing and I'll say to David hey can I by the way if you have one I'd love to come I'll show up <laughs> um but I would say to David, you know, and David's actually super flexible about stuff like that, especially now where we only, I mean, truly, we only have Zane and yeah. he's 14. Yeah. So it's, it's not, we don't have a big bedtime routine that right. we're having to go through. So I do feel like some of that is just the season of life that we're in, but I'm so glad to hear that you feel awkward sometimes showing up because you always look like you fit in wherever you are. <laughs> you look like you fit in Ever, everywhere. You look like you fit in. Just, I'm just kind just of pretend, up. and then it, it'll <laughs> seem like, that oh, way. There she is again. <laughs> There's that girl. How'd she no, get in? <laughs> that's such a that's such a good word because um, I can just imagine some of our listeners who maybe they're in a season where they're taking care of little kids, or even yeah. um, taking care of uh, like an elderly parent, or they're just mm-hmm. the, the season that they're in isn't necessarily allowing them to just be available and to be there. Right. And, to, and I think that that's such a huge, um, 
just reminder of how important it is to know your season and to know, totally. um, okay, I'm I'm in this right now. That that means that I can't just drop everything and show up for someone, but I can pray for them, or I can right make That's a meal, so good, or I can. Um, like send a text. And I think that that's just freeing for I, I, even just saying that it's like, okay, that's a good reminder for me. Cause I sometimes feel bad that I can't show up to the hospital or, or my friend's house or whatever, because I'm traveling with my husband or I'm um, in it with my kids at school or whatever it is. Like, I think for right. us, for us to know um, what's my season and what, what can I do? And what's God calling me to? Right. Because you don't want to show up for a friend to the detriment of your husband yeah. or to the detriment of your children. I don't want it to That's be good. like, well, she she went to Jenny's women's event. I mean, it was my prom. You know, she <laughs> she wasn't there for the pictures. Right, right. But she was at Jenny's. She's a good friend. Yep. You know, I don't ever want it to, you know, so I, I, I do think for people, and nowadays, like you said, with technology, there's so many ways of showing up. Like when you said, make a meal, I'm never going to make you a meal because I don't like to even cook. <laughs> right. But nowadays with, with Uber eats and DoorDash and things being delivered within 24 hours, it's, it's amazing what you can do. You don't even have to necessarily be that thoughtful of a person. Right. I mean, Amazon can get something to someone overnight. I mean, it, we can make this easier. We make it more complicated than it is sometimes. Totally, totally. You're so right. And I, I love that. Just, it doesn't have to be, because I think sometimes you think of, oh, I have to bring, I have to bring a meal or, because I'm with you. Like, I feel like I barely get it together to make a meal for my family. <laughs> <laughs> barely. And then I'm like, wait, I should probably make a meal for this person that uh, just had a baby. But I'm like, oh, I don't know if I should make them something. Oh, I should just no. send them like a gift card to get. Send them some, Yes. <laughs> Let them get what they want. I know, when right? they want. Yes, yes. When they want. It's you know, easier but going than to showing it. up. You and you and Levi show up. Mm. I mean, you show up for I mean, again, I've seen you show up for friends at events, like we've seen each other there. But I, I go back to when you showed up for us. Mm. When you showed up for us in February of twenty fourteen, we were so tired mm. and we had not experienced being there for people that way. And you guys coming, just your presence for us. And we had not, we were not the victims of a tragedy. And I remember we went to eat. I don't know if you, you probably don't remember this. We went to eat at um, an Italian restaurant here called Tavolino's. Oh, yeah. We went to eat, we sat at this table and we just talked. And then you came and you guys just hugged people. Not to go backwards on the subject, but I feel like everything you're telling me, you're good at. I'm like the junior, like I'm the junior bridesmaid of that. You're like the maid <laughs> of honor at that. You're so good at it. I mean, this, I should be inter <laughs> I should be like interviewing you. I'm like a, you know, like the homecoming court. I'm the girl that didn't win, but I'm one of the three. <laughs> you won. You won. You're the queen. You're the homecoming queen. I'm oh, part of the court. Oh my gosh, Lisa. You're amazing. We learn from each other we though. Do. We really do. We do. I, I, I get to learn when I see like, oh, that probably wasn't that hard to do A, B, or C. I'm gonna do that next time. The next time I see someone going through it, that was a great idea. And we just learn. That's so true. It's so true. And I think when we have that um, posture of um, of learning from who God's given us the pri privilege of getting to do life with and be friends with and and learn from, like you could literally learn from everybody. I mean, it's yeah. pretty amazing. But like to be in that, to have that posture of learning, but also just that relaxed confidence of being and allowing God to just do what he wants to do through you. I think, mm -hmm. I think it's more um, uh, attainable and more possible than what we think. Like you don't have to be a certain kind of person to walk with someone through their pain. Like if you right. just, if you just kind of hold your hands open to receive and to give however God wants to and to really be the the vessel or the conduit of his his love and his comfort and his encouragement like God can use you and when you think oh God yeah. God couldn't use me yes he can use you mm -hmm. and i think just that 
that uh, that willingness and that availability is what God's looking for. Because like you said, it could be your neighbor. It could be your coworker. Right. It could be someone you go to school with. It could be um, someone you just bump, in, bump into in the grocery store and is hurting and just a, a word from you or a, a, a loving look from you could bring well, right. strength. And, and that person, you don't have to walk through it with them. Yeah. It's just the moment in the grocery store. Yeah, I think that's really important what you said too, because you just said the people that you've had the privilege of doing that with, because it's not everybody. Mm-hmm. You can't do it for, you can't do it for everybody. No, it's not I possible. Mean, God's, God's going to, kind of like when I said you guys came here, it's not like you took every phone number of every parent that you met and said, now I'm going to walk you through, you know, a six month process that really helped me. That's not what you were called to do. Yeah, They just needed to look someone else in the eyes for that brief moment Mm. that understood their pain. Yeah, And that's what you were called to do. Yeah, You weren't, you weren't, you don't, I don't care how great you are. You wouldn't have the capacity to do that for every single person and if you try, you're going to end up hating it, yes. you know? So when you said, it's like the people you've had the privilege to be called to do this with, and it's not everyone. And I think, and that's so hard to know which that is, but yes. sometimes it is just that person in the grocery store and it's, it's not a follow through. It's a moment. Yeah. It's a moment. Yeah. That's huge. That's so huge. I love that. And that's hard. It that's is hard. hard. Think, ugh. Because you want to help everybody. Yeah. And I think that um, that's such a good point because I think to just really ask God to give you the eyes to see and to really say yes to what he's saying. Hey, I want you to, this is yours. This is, this is what I want you to do. Like, cause like you said, you can't do everything, but you can do something and you can do what God's calling you to do. And I think that there's just so much, there's so much freedom in that because it's, it's not, oh my gosh, I see all these needs on Instagram or I see all these things that, that needs to be, needs to be done and I can't do it all. Ah, but it's like, oh, my neighbor's kid is in the hospital. I could do something or my, you know, and, and, and really letting the Holy Spirit lead. And I think that that is seemingly is the key to walking people through their heartache and their Mm. mess and their grief and their pain is, is listening to the Holy Spirit lead you into what he's calling you to do. Right. And knowing you're exactly right. And knowing where to draw the line, you know, what exactly you're called to do in the situation and what you're not. I mean, some things I think God wants to say, okay, you've done enough. Now let me, now let me work with this person. Let, let me have this person. I need time with, I need time with them and their pain and their Mm. grief. They need to rely on me. They don't need to rely on you. You don't, you actually don't have the answers, even though you think you might, you don't, but I do, you know, Wow. that's something I found too. That's so good, Lisa. Gosh. Okay. Well, that's that's so powerful. And I just want to say thank you for how you live this way and how you do say yes to what God's calling you to and how you really do it with such a um, a grace. And a, um, it just seems so effortless. And I think it is a grace on you that God's given you to be able to just um, to be a good friend, um, to be someone who shows up, to be a um, a, a listening ear to be um, a shoulder for someone to lean on, cry on. I just, I just uh, admire that about you, and I'm so grateful for the way that you um, that you lead in that way, and that um, you and you and David both just have a quote unquote like vibe about you, a atmosphere about you you guys individually and together of just making people feel welcome and making people feel seen and making people feel special. And so I just thank you so much for you guys being I feel that. like I just made a little face because hearing this from you, <laughs> Jenny, I feel like that's, you're, you guys are the best at it. Oh so hearing gosh. it from you, when you say you make it look effortless, I'm like, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you make things look effortless when you're like, you make people feel good. I'm like, we do? Because we that's do. what you and Lisa do. So to th- listen, honestly, thank you. The fact that you, it's very humbling to me that you see me at all in that way. And I, I hope to, I hope to live up to those words. I mean, you're one of those friends for me. I mean, I, I would show up for you and I, I actually believe you would, well, you've shown it. 
that you would do that for me. So Mm -hmm. I thank you. I mean, you and Levi have not just been friends to David and I, and we, we cherish the two of you, but you both have been two of the greatest encouragers to my, not that you went to Zane, he's just not there yet, but to Charlie and Victoria. Mm -hmm. I mean, you and Levi together to Charlie have been beyond. I mean, Levi sent Charlie a Bible about this thick a couple (laughs) of years ago and until like this Christmas, he's preached out of it. Oh my um, gosh. But, but uh, you know, because Charlie is preaching, that's one thing, but Victoria doesn't do that. She's not, ministry is not, she loves the Lord, but she's called to something else. Yeah. And you for years have sent Victoria a little gift on her birthday. And she's always, she's always so touched that you would ever think of her. Aww. So again, when people say you can do little, I know it's, it may not seem like a big thing to you, but you, so it's not just you and Levi to David and I, but the fact you've been an encouragement to our kids. I mean, as you know, when someone is good to your kids, you have my heart for life. Yeah. You have my heart for life because of how good you've been to my kids. Oh my gosh. Well, they're You're easy making to me love. cry. They're easy You're making to me cry. So we need to relax. <laughs> they're easy to love. Um, we love you. And maybe I was just thinking um, if you would mind just praying, um, praying for those listening, maybe for those specifically yeah, who are walking walking people through something. That would just really, really I would special. be honored too. Okay. Dear Lord, first of all, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, thank you for my friend, Jenny, God. We thank you for Levi, just the whole Lusco family, Lord. And as Jenny and I have had this conversation, God, I pray for anyone listening. First of all, Lord, that is walking through a season of heartbreak or loss in any sense of that word, God, pain is pain. So I pray right now that you are the great comforter. I pray that just through this conversation, something we have said would be encouraging to them, Lord, that they feel you closer than they did a half an hour ago, God. Um, I do pray also, God, for the people that, yes, Lord, it is a privilege to have the opportunity to walk with someone through dark days in their life, Lord. So I pray if there's someone out there that's weary right now, Lord, that you'll remind them that you give them your strength and you'll give them your words and you'll go before them with what to say or what not to say. But more than anything, God, just remind them in their hearts that this is an honor, that they've been given an honor to be able to walk with someone during the period of time that this person did not choose and would not choose God. And I pray no matter where our conversations take us, Lord, that no matter what we say, we always point people to you yes. and to the fact that you're the perfecter, that you do not cause this pain, but you promise to use this pain if it will be surrendered to you. you. So again, God, thank you. Thank you for being in the midst of this conversation. Thank you for our friends. I just thank you for this time. You. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Thank you, Lisa. Oh, thank you, Jenny. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to swing by LeviLusco.com and JennyLusco.com to see what's going on in our world. And make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And in the meantime, we would love to connect with you on social media. Jenny Jenny and Levi Levi Lusco Lusco out. out. Access more 